Hello and happy Thursday. Um, thank you guys for being incredibly patient. We had um, a little bit of tech issues that thankfully my production manager Marlene helped me help me at least kind of work around a little bit. Um, you're going to actually see this be see this being broadcast from my YouTube channel because we couldn't kind of figure out how to do it with IHN, but we're going to work around all of that today. Um, and wrap up our last iHomeschool Hangout for the year for 2013. My name is Diana Kennedy and I'm here representing the iHomeschool Network which is a group of homeschool bloggers um, with only children, multiple children, preschool, high school and everything in between. We get together here every Thursday to share homeschooling topics, family management topics and just talk a little bit about our areas of expertise. So today we are going to be talking about growing your, growing your children spiritually. Um, so I've got a great panel of people here with me today and we're going to watch the event page as well and field some of your questions. If we have time, we'll cover those on camera as well. Okay, so we'll go through and introduce everybody. Jamie, you want to start us off, please? Hi, I'm Jamie. I blog over at The Unlikely Homeschool and I share thoughts on eclectic homeschooling and intentional parenting. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us today. Latoya? Hi, I'm Latoya Edwards, and I blog at latoyaedwards.net, and I am a single homeschool mom to two boys, and I blog about life and all its fun and crazy times from homeschooling to parenting to anything that occurs to us throughout our day and our week. Wonderful. Thanks for being with us again today. Marlene? Hi, everyone. I'm Marlene Griffiths. I blog over at adiligentheart.com. Um, blog a little bit about faith, family, homeschooling, marriage. Um, I'm happy to be here. Excellent. You're going to see Marlene uh, behind the scenes. She's going to be my production manager helping me to manage the event page and YouTube and everything that kind of makes this run so nice smoothly. Renee? Hi everyone, um, I'm Renee Brown and I blog at greatpeaceacademy.com. Um, I blog about homeschooling an only child who is an advanced learner, as well as our family life and our faith. Thanks, Renee. Sam? Hi, everybody. I'm Sam Kelly. I blog over at Sam's Noggin, where I talk about faith, family, homeschooling, and fitness. Excellent. Thanks for being here with us again today. Once again, I'm Diana Kennedy, and when I'm not representing the iHomeschool Network, you'll find me at thekennedyadventures.com. I write about living my Catholic faith, managing a large family, and our misadventures in homeschooling. So welcome. Like I said, once again, wait. thanks for um, going through our technical issues with us, too. And so we're glad that you could join us today. We're going to talk about raising or growing your kids spiritually. Um, if you listen to our intro, something that I noticed that all of us mentioned is that we all um, are pretty forthright and talk a lot about our faith on our, on our blogs. Um, so this is not, it should not come as any surprise to us that, that it's an uh, area of importance that we like to work on with, our, with, our, with ourselves and also with our families. So we'll talk about um, a few tips that we do, um, questions that may come up, um, that sort of thing. Let's um, start. Um, I'll have my panel um, address like why why is it important to grow your kids in faith? Anybody want anybody want to tackle that one first off? I can. Um. I really think like the whole point of parenting and homeschooling is discipleship and the big part of discipleship is helping your children grow spiritually and in their faith and so that is really the focus of all of my parenting efforts at our homeschool. Um, my kids will tell you that we start every day with you know devotions and Bible and prayer and for us sometimes if that's the only thing that we get done that day I still call that day as a success because that's you know, the most important thing for us, and that's what we focus on. Excellent. Anybody else want to input their input some of their stuff, too? Um, well, I Go think ahead. that initially um, it's a call to obedience. Um, I believe that God and His Word calls us as parents to be, like LaToya said, discipling our own children. I think it's a way that we can um, pour in our own worldview to our children and give them just a firm foundation of our faith. So, Excellent. Go ahead, Renee. 
a couple of years ago, uh, I went to a conference on. Um, it was just it was a church conference actually, but I took a class there on homeschooling and how we are to determine what our end goal is. And if our end goal is anything but heaven, then we're missing the mark. And we really need to focus on training up our children to reach their eternal goal, which is heaven. Excellent. I think we'll talk a little bit about, um, we'll start kind of like with what resources that we use and kind of how we work this into our day. Um, let's talk about that. Um, Sam, do you have resources that you guys use at home, like um, a specific curriculum or just kind of do you piece things together? We kind of go our own way, um, like I've said in other chats. We're non-denominational, so it's kind of hard for us to find something that really fits us. So we, uh, my husband's a minister, so he kind of leads that area in our home. And for us, um, something of great importance is memorizing scripture. So we do that as a family a lot. So we also have a great um, resource, Bible, Bible study guide for all ages, I think, that we use within our church. So we like to reinforce those. Our whole congregation learns um, the same lessons at the same time. So I think that that's great to follow up with the lessons that they're learning in Bible study. Great, thank you. What about anybody else have resources that they'd like to share? Okay. I've been using um, the Leading Little Ones to God with my guide uh, this year. Um, I bought it a couple years ago and kind of dusted it off as I was going through my massive amount of homeschool stuff the beginning of this year. Um, and so I really like it. My youngest um, was four and a half when we started this year, and I really love it because it really is geared towards the little ones um, like I have, but even my seven-year-old was able to follow along, and he wasn't bored, and it just good discussions, good scriptures, you know, good questions, good, good lessons to apply, and so we kind of use that along with, um, we also use, oh, my brain died, Answers in Genesis, um, and then just, you know, we read our Bibles together as well. Great. Anybody else have resources to share? I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till last on this question. I'm gonna let everybody else go ahead on me. Well, I'll go ahead and share. Um, we use different resources for um, different types of intentional faith building. Um, for instance, my kids each do their own personal devotion, so we have. I've provided some great resources for that. I have an emergent reader, and he uses the um, read with. No, See Me Read Bible, and it's a, a Bible based on emergent reading skills, um, very similar to like a Bob book kind of um, book, but it's um, faith-based, and it's just scripture and scriptural stories. Um, for us as a family, during family devotions right now, during the holidays, we're going through the Jesse tree and pulling in scriptures um, and going through the Jesse tree characters in the scripture. But um, I really like desiring God resources. I don't know if anybody's familiar with those. They have um, a scripture memory packet um, called Fighter Verses, and um, we have always enjoyed that one. Right now we're going through a series of three books put out by Sally Michael, and they're called God's Names, God's Providences, and God's Promises, and they're really excellent tools to really share um, specific um, points in scripture as well as people in scripture that point to that specific character quality or attribute. So they've been very helpful in our home. Excellent. That's um, something I'm not from I'm not familiar with those resources, but um, for go, for those of you that are watching on via YouTube or either over on the event page, I'll have Jamie put some of those links um, over on the event page that you can take a look at those and see if those will work for your family. Um, Renee, what about you? Yes, um, I have three different resources, and one Sam has already mentioned, actually, and that's Bible Study Guide for All Ages. Um, it is exactly what it says. It is for all ages. It was written by a homeschooling mom named Mary Baker. She lives in Arkansas, and she had a desire to train her children in the Word of God, so she created this great dynamic resource that does just that, and it covers the entire scope of Scripture um, for all ages beginning from three through adulthood, actually. That's why Sam's able to use it at her local congregation. Um, and then another one that I use is apologeticspress.com. 
and this is um, it's not specifically geared toward homeschoolers it is um, geared for general Bible study but it's also um, the guys who run that site they are trying very hard to defend the Bible and everything that that contains so they create materials for children for adults they have material um, one specific one that I'm really excited about is called discovery scripture and science for kids it's a magazine it's got like four or five pages and um, it talks about science and how science comes from the Bible we can learn from the Bible all about different things in science and the last one I want to share is um, it's actually a CD of songs and this too was produced by a homeschooling mom it is called Hannah's hundreds there are four volumes in this particular um, series and each volume has 100 scriptures set to song so if you um, go through all four volumes by the end your children will know 400 verses of scripture there you go thanks Renee if you don't mind too later on if you guys will leave those links over in the event room too for other people to be able to see um, I, I have I have heard other people mention Hannah's hundreds before um, as a Catholic family we we kind of do a little bit I've pieced mine together a little bit kind of here and there we started out with a program that was actually from our parish um, but after we went through one year I thought it was a little bit um, babyfied for my for my first year for my first grader at the time so what we have done is a virtue study from the Dominican Sisters of Nashville a big bonus is that it's free um, with lots and lots of focus on service it'll take a saint a saint a month look at a virtue from that saint and then it has suggested activities for the family to do together to encourage um, encourage service within the family <clears throat> and then it goes through like in cycles so like a it's like a three-year cycle um, so year one is faith year two is hope I forget what year three is but so you just kind of work through together as a family which is good for us because that's the kind of way that's the way that I, I want us to learn together not just like I am the teacher and this is what I'm telling you but more so okay we're all gonna learn together as we go so we use lots of saints books lots of saints stories lots of Bible stories there's a little book called little acts of grace that we use for um, just kind of teaching you the different parts of the church and um, that sort of thing so I've got all of those kind of posted on my blog I think I have, may have some of the event page as well so and that kind of leads me into um, I think most of our Sam has some high schoolers Latoya's are young Renee is young Jamie I forget how old your kids are um, my oldest is 10 and I have um, on down through to one okay so good that that was that was my that was my segue into into age range is that um, I had a question in my notes to ask about you know what age is it appropriate to start thinking about or moving toward teaching your teaching your children your faith or growing trying to grow them spiritually and I'm guessing just from the girls on the panel that they're kind of kind of in my in my shoes is that we start pretty early um, I don't want to say from birth but I mean you know we have books for taught we have Bible books for toddlers we have you know song little little Bible songs for toddlers um, I have a little bit of experience with older kids with my oldest daughter um, but I mean would you guys agree that we kind of, that we all start pretty young no 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 it's not it's not never too soon to start we start before birth <laughs> yeah. so um, we start um, praying for our children's faith um, while we're expecting them and um, I'm usually a Bible class teacher for littles so I start bringing my children in a couple days after I've given birth because that's as much of a break as I had usually gotten from being a teacher was while I was in the hospital um, so we we start before birth in our home um, well, our, right now our we're concentrating on memorizing verses and I'm definitely going to check out that Hannah's hundreds because I know that it's easier to remember things from song um, and our high schooler he is focusing some more on apologetics 
Um, we have some, numerous books from the company that Renee mentioned, Apologetics Press. And right now he is reading A Reason for God. So he is definitely into the, the, the tougher stuff being in high school um, than the other kids. But, but our end goal is that all of our children end up in heaven. And so for us, that, that has to start um, before we get to hold them. So it's very important to us. I, I especially, I would love to find something that we could find to do all year long. I guess we could just read the Bible together in the evenings, but we're really um, enjoying the Advent season right now. We read Bartholomew's Passage every evening, and we have read um, Jotham's Journey before, and last year we tried a new one called Journey to Bethlehem, and um, they, they really enjoy those stories. It's kind of like little tiny chunks. You know, it doesn't take you too long. The kids are, like, tired and starting to fall asleep, but it's, it's a wonderful way to end the day together as a family. Excellent. Anybody else have any resources um, for little kids or older kids? Like kind of how how do you how do you do things on on both ends of the spectrum? Well, Diana, I just wanted to share. I think the thought that um, in sharing our faith and feeding our children our faith is very similar to the way we feed them at the dinner table. I mean, I have a one year old who I have to kind of mash up the food. He still eats the same chicken that we eat. It just looks a little different. Whereas my ten year old, I just slap the chicken on the plate and hand it to her and she can cut it herself. Um, I think feeding spiritually is the same as feeding physically. You just have to cut it into bite-sized portions and make it applicable to the age that you're dealing with. And um, so I think at any age, I mean we started when, like Sam was saying, before we were even expecting, but I think really intentionally um, feeding our firstborn when she was about five months old, and it's just a matter of sitting down with her and reading some of those um, Bible story books. My very favorite is the Big Picture Storybook Bible. Um, that is an exceptional resource for anybody of any age to really get a, a wonderful picture of what the big point is of why we're here on earth and, and who God is and his plan and his story for um, all of his children. I love I love that chicken analogy because it's it's so true, and that was um, that was actually kind of one of my one of my other topics here too is how do you decide when to teach the bigger concepts like Sam mentioned apologetics and I think Renee did too the smaller children are obviously aren't ready for that but so how do you decide how do you decide when to when to when to introduce some of these some of these bigger more abstract, I guess, is what I'm looking for, concepts with your kid. Diana, can I address that? Mm -hmm. um, so I believe that we are responsible for training our children in the Word. And I think that that has to start from very early, like everyone else has said. And I really, really, really loved Jamie's analogy of bite-sized pieces. But I think that we can, um, we can introduce concepts that are maybe not what we believe in those bite-sized pieces as well. But what we're doing is we're grounding them in the Word so that when their time comes, and it's not today, but in the future, they will have knowledge of Scripture to be able to defend the faith. Excellent. Thanks for your input with that too. All right. Anybody else have anything to add before we? I kind of want to take a different uh, take a different tack with this topic. I did want to mention. Go ahead. When you asked about um, how to address um, the difficult topics and when, um, for us we don't get into the study of it until they're a little older. But it's something that we discuss as a family. You know, things that come up in society when they find out things that others believe that we don't believe. Um, we don't necessarily grab out a book and say dig in and study all of this, but we have an open discussion about it and talk about why and how and, you know, my husband will mention a few scriptures that will be applicable to that situation. So it's not as much a, an in-depth study as it is we're going to discuss these things in a fam as a family so that our children know where we stand and why we stand there. Excellent. That's we do a lot of the same thing too. Age appropriate, obviously. 
What about um, because that brings me to another point. Um, do you do most of your teaching at home formally? Like, okay, Tuesdays we do Bible studies, or um, you know, we'll do Bible on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Or do you weave it in throughout your day? Is it is it more formal? Is it more informal? I'll tackle that one, Diana. Um, I think it's a twofold answer. I think it has to be a combination of both. I think my husband and I are very intentional on purpose at certain times, like family Bible study at night and um, encouraging the kids to develop uh, the spiritual discipline to have family devo or personal devotions. But I think if you just sprinkle your faith on in your day um, with those intentional moments, it's just going to be a sprinkling of faith. And I want my faith to be saturated into my children. And so, therefore, I have to saturate my faith into the day. Um, scripture talks about um, teaching them when you sit by the road and when you walk by the way. So my husband and I really, although um, we value those intentional times, we really put more emphasis on the organic or... Um, uh, What's the word? Just um, unplanned moments of, of faith building. Utilizing those natural um, moments of teaching throughout the day. Um, because Jesus himself did that. Jesus was a natural storyteller. He brought in ex personal examples and examples of other people, the parables. Um, and I think that that makes your faith more authentic to your children than just handing them a great resource that was written by somebody else. So I think it has to be a combination of both, those intentional moments of faith building with great resources, but then just um, real authentic living your faith in front of them and bringing them into um, the faith building conversations of the day and pointing, um, pointing to God um, using your faith as a grid for all of the decisions that you make and making those decisions in front of them. Excellent. Thanks for thanks for your input there. Anybody else um, want to talk about like formal versus informal learning? Um, Diana, I, w I can talk about that. You know, Galatians 5.25 says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also then walk in the Spirit. So that is kind of how we choose to teach. Um, it's a daily thing. It is not something that is separate from our lives. It is who we are. And we teach our child who we are through uh, study of the Scripture. We do that in multiple multiple ways. We pray with him. We pray as a family. We encourage him to pray on his own. Um, we sing praises to God throughout the day. Um, you will often hear one of us or all of us um, just start just start singing. We just sing together um, or one will be in another room and you'll hear them singing um, by themselves. We also um, every night, every single night before he goes to bed, we read a chapter in the Bible and we have done that since he was first in our lives uh, we adopted. He came to us at six months of age and now he is 10 and he has had a scripture read to him or he has read every single night. And then daily um, in a homeschool Bible is a subject. It is the first subject we tackle um, every single day and um, without fail that is, you know, so we weave it in. It's not, l let me rephrase that. It's not that we weave our faith into our life, we weave our life into our faith. That's an excellent way to put that too, Renee. Um, Marlene, let me pause for a minute and um, check with you. We have, do we have people in the event room that we need to address or questions or comments? I was actually just reading a comment that just came in, uh, just started reading it. But it seems like she has a question, and since I can't pull it into the screen, I'll just read it from the event room. <laughs> um, Madeline says, wow, I'm surrounded by super moms here. Is anyone where I'm at? My children have ADD Asperger's symptoms. Their attention span is short, and if I do not use their attention to cover the other subjects, math, English, reading, etc., we do not get those done. When it comes to teaching spiritually, it is an all-day affair, from early in the morning to the end of the day. They are hearing, saying, living out scripture. 
the BJU curriculum I use offers so many opportunities to introduce Bible principles and stories. We have songs that they sing and hear. The boys know a ton of scriptures and most of it was learned as time goes on. They know many Bible stories and love hearing it narrated in a dramatic reading of it. We do have Bible curriculum offered through BJU, but we do not use it. We just let the Word live in our daily lives. I'm hoping that as time goes on, their attention spans grow and we can do one of the many youth Bible studies that I've been, that I have waited for them. So basically her question is, is her kids have attention span issues, they're showing ADD and Asperger symptoms, and by the time she gets everything else done, she doesn't seem to have time to teach um, spiritual stuff. So that's her question to you guys. I see Latoya is like lighting up over there. You, you're all over this one. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, my oldest son is actually all over the autism spectrum. He is ADHD, he's got ODD, he's got SPD, and I look at him and say, oh my goodness. But um, I can relate to like her kind of frustration and concern because for the longest time, um, it is even now it is a struggle to get him to sit still and listen uh, for a five or ten minutes straight. Um, so what I have had to learn to do is to realize that the Bible is a living word, and so I introduce that to my boys in that manner. So um, I have tried different like devotions and things, but really my boys, they just like to hear the scripture. They like for me to sit down and read. And so I would say, you know, pull out your Bible, uh, open up Judges, and read to your boys about these battles and these fights and you know, all of these things that these great people in the Bible are doing. It strikes, I mean, great conversation. Um, my boys love um, to hear about Samson. And so we read Samson, and they, you know, I let them act out you know, the different fights and things, and my son's like, Mommy, I'm going to get the lion, and I'm like, that's great, you know, but what do we learn about that? Like, kind of use their lack of attention span to just bring it alive. I mean, you can do that with almost, you know, any story whatsoever. So often for us, I will read a scripture, and I will let my boys act it out or build something that goes along with it, um, or I might take them outside to do something. Um, I do... Um, it's funny, for the Jericho story, they love being able to knock stuff down. So quite often, if we're reading that scripture, um, they have big cardboard bricks. And so while I read the scripture to them, they will build up the walls of Jericho. And then I let them walk around it seven times and scream and kick the things down. Um, so I think it's not so much, I don't think it's so much about um, having them kind of sit and focus. Um, but if you just start your day with that, I mean... I can't tell you the number of school days where we have literally done Bible and nothing else. Um, but start with that first thing. Um, if I try to wait until the end of the day or when everything else is done to get to a Bible, it's not going to happen. It's the same thing for me with my quiet time. If I don't get that done beforehand, um, you know, kind of hang it up and forget it. But And start slow. I mean, I started with my boys. You know, I need you to sit still and I need you to focus for five minutes. And then when they got to five minutes, okay, now we're going to do ten minutes. And now we're going to do 15 minutes. And so now, even my little guy, he's able to sit, you know, and listen and focus. And, you know, I have them narrate back to me, you know, what did you learn? I ask them questions. Um, you know, we stop. I let them ask me questions. Um, sometimes I tell them mommy doesn't know and that that's a great question for a youth pastor on Sunday. Um, but I just kind of try to get them involved. And honestly, that is, I have found now that I don't have any attention problems whatsoever when it comes to the Bible. If I'm like, we're going to, you know, read our Bibles. I mean, they get their Bibles, they sit down, and they're ready to go, and it really sticks with them. They, because I think it's because they're doing something with it. Um, you know, make it more than just stories on a page. You know, my kids understand now that David and Goliath really happened. Those are real people, and that kind of brings the word alive for them, and, you know, they like being able to do something with it. So that helps a lot. I mean, act it out, build something. Uh, shoot a home movie, put costumes on, just, you know, make it fun and, and enjoy the word, um, you know, so that it doesn't become like a chore, like another subject that they have to check off for the day. Diana, can I just throw out a resource that might be helpful too? Um, I have a little one who doesn't suffer from um, any of that but has a very short attention span. It's just his personality more than anything. And I found that if I can capitalize on 
um, bedtime and we have a CD player in his room and so one great resource that has helped us with that is um, the Adventures in Odyssey and I'm not a huge fan of the regular traditional Adventures in Odyssey just because as a homeschooler most of the stories have to do with public school situations but they do have um, a series called Bible Eyewitness and it's simply scriptural stories um, just the Bible um, told in an audio version and they're very engaging and very exciting and um, so I don't know how old um, this woman's children are but um, that might be something worth looking into is just a, an audio series that they can listen to at bedtime. Diana, I can suggest another resource as well. Um, it's the DVD Read and Share Bible. It's by Tommy Nelson and um, it is a it's you know it's a movie but it's uh, set in um, you know uh, I've just lost the word it's it's kinda like um, an animation that's what it is it's an animation so it's very kid friendly uh, but they're very scriptural in uh, what they're teaching and my son loves them he's 10 uh, but I think that they are very very good for any age group Thank you guys for all your resources for Madeline. I um, hope, hope that was helpful. I want to um, just throw in, um, I don't know, you kind of got to play, play a little bit to their, um, play to their passions a little bit. Like I was, I'm listening to LaToya talk and I'm like, oh yeah, my boys are all about St. Michael, St. George. Anybody with, anybody with a sword and soldiers and killing dragons and blah, blah, and whatever, protecting people, they're all over that. Um, my daughter is seven. She loves to hear about people in the Bible that have her name. You know, so her favorites are Rachel and Elizabeth, of course, because, you know, she likes to hear about that. We like to talk about people, like, in our family that have names that come from the Bible. So it's just kind of, I don't know, we just kind of capitalize on on a strength or something that they that they want to know that they want to know more about and we just kinda go with it. Um a big thing that we do too is if um they're a captive audience when they're in the bathtub. <laughs> so um we do a lot of reading in the tub. Like they don't read in the tub. I sit by the tub and read to them. So that may be another thing that just kinda just kinda get some stuff in like that too. Wonderful. Um Marlene, we have anything else we need to address? Um, at the moment, not right now. <laughs> All right, great. I'm going to take a little bit um, of a different approach. Um, well, what about, let's talk about this. Um, as moms, um, are we all solely responsible, like in your homes, are you solely responsible? I think we've covered a little bit of this, but I have one panel member that I'm not going to call out that I want her to give her input. She'll figure it out in a second. Um, do you do you are you the sole responsibility for teaching your children your faith? Um, do other people pitch in, like your husband, like your extended family? Um, so just like talk to me about that too. Am I gonna have to call? Am I gonna have to call on you? <laughs> like, she know she knows I'm talking to her. <laughs> I want I want Latoya to give her input. The single, the single mother. Fine. Um, well, to answer your question, um, yes, I am the sole person in the house that's responsible for my kids' spiritual growth. Um, their dad um, is not, you know, he doesn't attend church, he doesn't do studies with them and that, so he is not, has not yet stepped into that role. Um, we pray for him every day that he will. But yeah, um, it's, as a single mom, it's on me, and um, so I field all the questions, I initiate the studies, the prayer. And all of that. I will say though that um, I have a few people that kind of help support me in that. Um, uh, we had a really excellent youth pastor. Um, he left the church for you know new ministry and stuff, but he was really really helpful um, at the beginning of the year when he was at our church um, and just supporting me and answering questions that I didn't have answers to, and you know maybe talking with my son on a you know man to man um, type level and those things. Um, and then also uh, my boys are um, in Royal Rangers and so once a week they get to go and be um, in kind of this mentorship program where they're with other boys their age, they're caring from other godly men, but for the most part um, it's my job and it's a job that I don't take lightly and I understand that it is my job um, and it's, it's actually kind of funny because it causes some tension in my family because I have members in my family um, 
that think that they should all have input into those kinds of topics and things. And so I have had to learn to kind of put my foot down um, with telling my kids it's okay to ask this person these kind of questions. It's not okay, you know, come talk to mommy or we, we don't fellowship or hang out, you know, here and there. But um, I do the best that I can and I have lots of friends praying for me and and, you know, we pray every day for God to send, you know, a mentor or, you know, for the father or, you know, whatever it is for some help because it would be nice to have somebody else to share the, uh, share the, the duty with. Just in case anybody thought I was picking on Latoya, I wanted I, I knew I knew a little bit of background of her experience, and I wanted her to share it just because I feel like probably some of our viewers may be in the same boat, and just to kind of know that you know, hey, you're not alone. You're not the only person that's kind of shouldering. Shoulder, and I don't, I don't want to call it a burden. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, res huge responsibility. We we bring it up. Um, at, at baptism, we are reminded that um, our priest will go through, and I can't remember the exact words, and I always sob, sob, <laughs> big, fat, ugly tears during baptism because we are reminded that it is such a ginormous responsibility, and this is what we've been called to do. So it always it makes me cry because I'm just like, oh, man, <laughs> here we go again. This is a big, this is a big mountain to climb. So you have to kind of take it in, like, in little bites. So... But thank you, Latoya. I appreciate it. Anybody else want to um, talk about kind of how they do it? And like, do you involve your do you do you involve your extended family? Is that a source of stress for you? Can I, you know, how does that work? Nobody's waving at me. Well, fortunately for me, our extended family um, we share a common faith, and uh, so that's very beneficial. So. Um, we try to surround our child with like-minded people, um, whether it's through our congregation, through our closest friends, um, through our extended family. We try to ensure that the people that he is around on a regular basis and is talking to are able to reinforce what he's learning at home so that he can see that we are a worldwide um, group of people who are sharing um, the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. Excellent. Thanks, Renee, for sharing. Anybody else want to put their uh, put some two cents in? You got a husband that helps tremendously, or anybody? Well, I'll just say that um, you know my husband takes a really wonderful leadership role in our home as far as faith goes, and we have the blessing and the benefit that both of the sets of grandparents share our faith. Now we do have some extended family that while they share our immediate faith, maybe um, they walk it a little bit different than us, but that has actually opened up a lot of great conversations with us and our children to just be able to talk about some things that might that their faith might look different in their home and um, how does that look in our home. So it's actually spurred a lot of, spurred a lot of great conversation. I'm glad you brought that up because that was actually a question that I intended um, intended to address. What um, if your child in, um, expresses an interest in other faith, learning about other faiths? What do you do? Do you do you downplay that? Do you cover other faiths at all? Like what? Ha you know, like what? I, I, don't, I haven't had that issue because my kids are my kids are younger. Um, but like what ha what what happens? Say if somebody asks about Buddhism, if they ask about Judaism, I mean anything. Um, where do you go with that? Well, we actually are a part of a co-op that for the past two years we've been um, kind of formulating a geography club and we, we learn about different uh, countries around the world. And with that we learn about their culture and a little bit about their religion. And that strikes a lot of conversation, but I'm a firm believer that our homes are supposed to be a greenhouse for our children. And within that greenhouse they have safety. They have safety to maybe learn something a little bit different, different from us, so that we can have a conversation and help ground them in what we believe um, so that if, if a decision is made within my home, the consequences are not dire because I've, I've made um, a greenhouse. And so they might hear about other faiths and we might 
um, talk about how other faiths are different from ours, but it's within the safety of our home and the truth that we can provide. Excellent. Anybody else have input with that? I do. I know um, for us, we're not in a co-op because uh, I'm too flaky to commit to something like that, but um, my boys do interact with lots of different kids, you know, from different families, especially when they are with their dad. Um, you know, that's a whole separate set of, um, you know, people that they're interacting with. And what I have found to be so helpful, and one reason why I make sure that we are doing our Bible every day um, is that I'm trying to teach my children to use kind of the word as their test for things. So my son came home one day and he was like, Mom, I was talking to my friend and he, and he was talking about this man and he went on this voyage and he cut off this lady's head and she had snakes and there were gods and, and other people. But you said that there's only one God. And, you know, he was had not been exposed to myths and mythology and and things like that beforehand, but it was very easy to sit him on, you know, on my lap, and we pull out the Bible, and I said, well, what does the Bible say? The Bible says there's one true God. I'm like, but even if we look in the Old Testament, we can see throughout the whole Bible, you know, different groups of people that believed differently, and I was able to kind of, I walk through with him, yes, people believe different things. The Bible tells us there's one God. Here's what happens when we kind of stray away from that, and we kind of have good conversations about that. So I'm not one that kind of says, like, kind of keep it out. Um, I just, like Jamie said, you know, your, your home is the place where they can ask these questions, where they can kind of form the base and the foundation of their faith so that as they get older, my hope is that I'm kind of putting myself out of work so that eventually they'll get to an age where they'll have their own discernment and they'll be able to hear or see something for themselves, know exactly where to look, you know, know the right questions to walk through on their own. Um, and that way, that's when you know that they're firm in their faith, when they're able to do that on their own. But um, we deal with that a lot. You know, we have family members that live differently than, you know, how I'm teaching my kids, even in my own life. I remember when my oldest son, we read something that talked about, um, you know, we were purity and, and, you know, the family and how it's supposed to be structured. And he was really upset for a week because he thought that I was going to go to hell because I was married and I had two kids. So, um, you know, it, it opens up stressful conversations at times, but um, it's really been, you know, it's good to have that dialogue um, with my kids. And my seven-year-old, he is good for asking me questions that I don't expect him to have until he's like 13. Um, but we always bring it back to the Bible. What does the scripture say? you know, what does God want us to do? And I always remind him, you know, we have free will. We have to offer people grace and love um, because that's what we want, you know, for ourselves if we think or believe differently than somebody else. Um, so just really good conversations, good important life lessons. So fun. Can I just piggyback on what she said for a second? Um, I, I love what you said, LaToya. I, I am a firm believer, and this is one of my biggest mantras. It's my job as a mother to work my way out of a job. And that um, that is implied with my faith, too. I need to so firmly root my children in their faith that they're able to spiritually feed themselves later on. And if I'm constantly... Um, playing the Holy Spirit's role in their life and, and not letting them work through some of these issues, obviously age appropriately. I wouldn't expect my two-year-old to be able to um, wrestle with other religions. But if I'm constantly playing the Holy Spirit's role in their life, what are they going to do when they're 18 and I'm not there to make that decision for them? So I have to firmly root them in truth and build a foundation when they're little. But even my, my eight-year-old and my ten-year-old are, are able to wrestle with some of those, those um, other faiths and how they are different from our faith because I firmly grounded them in truth. And now they're able to, with baby steps, start feeding themselves spiritually. Isn't, and isn't that the goal for me as a mom? So um, I am a firm believer in Bible-based learning, and so I weave history, science, and literature, and sometimes even math, into um, a Bible perspective of learning. Um, I think that I was a bit terrified to teach my son about other religions, and I was a bit terrified to teach him 
that um, that people do worship false gods, but by weaving in um, world history and the study of uh, Greek mythology and ancient Egypt, I was able to show him how even during the Old Testament, like um, Latoya said, that even during the Old Testament, even the Hebrew people often turned to false gods. And so then we examined the scripture and we determined and helped him to determine that there is only one God and that he is the creator of the world. So I think we can take um, God gives us everything we need for life and godliness, and he gives it to us in his word. So if we, if we allow our children to really de dig in and study at age-appropriate levels, they're going to come to that knowledge of faith on their own, and we're just laying the foundations they need to build their faith house. Excellent. Thank you, ladies, for your input. Um, our last, the last thing I want to kind of cover. Let me let me check with Marlene real quick before I go off kind of on another tangent. Um, anything we need to cover from the event room? I know it looks a little different. It's kind of hard, kind of a little bit, a little bit more difficult to navigate from from our end. From um, from the viewers, it looks great, but from our end, it's yeah. a little little bit hairy. Looks wonderful over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Ashley just um, mentioned a comment, um, kind of agreeing with what um, Jamie said. Um, she said, just because two families share the same faith, it might look different in action. It's a great way to discuss the practical living out of your faith with your kids, why we do things a certain way, and why it might or might not be okay that they do things differently. I think a lot of it is just being kind of honest, honest with your children. Um, I have always subscribed to the to the thought that if they're if they ask a question, if they're old enough to kind of be contemplating it and asking, it's my responsibility to answer it, you know, honestly and age appropriately. That's with faith, with with morality, with birds and the bees, with anything. That's just kind of how we handle it in our house. Well, so last, I want to kind of cover um, uh, the the last. We'll say we'll say the tough spot for last. Um, I don't know if we've had if people with experience with this or not on the panel, but how do you handle children that aren't interested, that aren't interested in learning about their faith or aren't interested in growing spiritually? Um, the the ones that are balking and um, you know digging their feet in like a mule when you want to when you want to teach them more more about God or you know here we're going to church we're going to go do this and you know they're saying no and fighting you tooth and nail. So, do you have people? Anybody have experience with that, or how did you handle it? Nobody. Well, I'll just say, you know, the verdict is still out on my parenting and how I've uh, poured into my children. Only time will tell. But we did have a, a situation where one of our sons um, didn't seem to have a a natural drawing or an interest like our others at that same age and my husband bless his heart just determined that he was just going to pray um, daily be on his knees daily that God would draw that little boy to him because there's nothing that we can do to play the Holy Spirit's role it's our job to be obedient to our call to train our children but beyond that we can't play the Holy Spirit and so he just determined that um, of course, he prays for all of our children, but just to really pour a significant amount of prayer for that one child, for that one need, that he would be drawn to um, God and things of our faith. And we're already seeing the fruits, so um, never underestimate the, the power of prayer. Excellent. Anybody else have input for that one? Um, I could just a little bit. I know my youngest um, until about this year was very resistant to anything to do with the Bible or praying or whatever and he's little so I basically just let him know that um, me and my house will serve the Lord and so um, when it was time to have Bible time I was like if you don't want to participate that's fantastic but you will sit you will be present you will be respectful um, and that's just kind of the rule in our house, you know, we're going to have Bible time together, and if you don't want to participate and you're not interested, 
you sit, you be quiet, you know, you listen and you're respectful, and then you can go on about your business. And I have found that kind of doing that consistently, um, his heart started to change. And, you know, he, he didn't want to be there. And then, wait, Mommy, what are you reading? And then, oh, can you find that for me in my Bible? To, uh, Mommy, I want Jesus in my heart, and I want to get baptized. So, I mean, granted, my kids are really small, but I will imagine that my stance won't change as they get older. You know, we're going to be in here. We're going to follow the rules, and, and here are the rules. Mommy, can you like an apple and have friends? Excellent. Thanks, Latoya. I think that about wraps it up um, for us, unless we've got comments from the event room that we can that we can find <laughs> find and address. Um, we actually have a couple of people sharing links to their different resources they enjoy. Um, so I guess if our watchers can hop on over to the event room, just go and look through those links. There's some really awesome resources being shared over there. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much, you guys, for spending your afternoons with us. Um, this is going to be our last hangout of 2013 because we're going to take a break for Christmas. Um, and then we will be back um, in 2014 starting on January the 2nd. You'll find us here every Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, noon Mountain Time, and 11 a.m. early, early for the folks over on the West Coast. Um, you can follow, what I would do, encourage you to do is to circle all, all of our panel members, and then we're going to go through the interviews real quick again for you in just a second. Follow those girls on Google Plus and check out their YouTube areas. You can circle the iHomeschool Network. Follow us on YouTube as well. And then just kind of keep your eyes peeled. We'll be announcing the schedule of, um, of topics that are coming up for January and February pretty soon, so just keep your eyes peeled. Um, it'll be at ihomeschoolnetwork.com slash hangouts, and then once we get that finalized, we'll put it into like a printable schedule that you can stick on your refrigerator and put in your phone and be reminded to come and join us at every Thursday. All right. Thank you so much, ladies. I have Jamie from the Unlikely Homeschooler, Latoya Edwards from LatoyaEdwards.net, Marlene Griffith is at adiligentheart.com. Dot net, I always forget. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> Renee Brown is at Great Peace Academy, and Sam Kelly is at Sam's Noggin. I'm Diana Kennedy, and you'll find me at the Kennedy Adventures. Thanks so much for spending your afternoon with us. Bye bye.